Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Inside the Yellow podcast. new season where we're going to be promoting all about the Walk for Autism 2024, the stadium tour for Anna Kennedy Online. We're back, we're walking 65 miles over two days, inside the Yellow podcast, joined by our great friend Team Godo. We are going to be taking on this adventure together this year and we need your help. We want you to be talking to your football clubs, the other 11 teams that are involved, to help us make this as big as we can. So today's episode, we're going to be focusing on one of those 12 teams that's supporting us on this journey this year. We're going to be focusing on Watford. Now, Watford is a special club to me. I'm a Watford Football Club supporter, and they were part of our 2022 Walk for Autism, where we did Leicester to Watford. So Watford has always been a big part of the Walk for Autism, and we are bringing it back to them to start and to finish at, at the Vicarage Road Stadium and more importantly, at the Graham Taylor statue on Yellow Brick Road this year. So let's start today's episode, the focus on Watford Football Club. So I'm a Watford Football Club supporter, and I first came to Watford back in 1998, August 1998, Coca-Cola Cup second leg tie against Cambridge United. Unfortunately, that day we actually lost. It was 1-1 on the night which meant we did actually go out 2-1 on aggregate. But what I fell in love with the club was just how accessible it was, how close you were to the pitch, to the game, to everything that was about it. It was this club that was so community-led, community-driven. And at the time, I was so fortunate to start supporting the club in the second spell of Graham Taylor's management. Someone who drove community, someone who drove all about that kind of Watford spirit, and town community spirit and brought that into the football club and brought the football club into the community. And I was so kind of blessed to have that kind of time to, 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 to find Watford. Even better bit about this was it was the second time that he had taken Watford from a lower division and took them into the Premier League. So in 1998, that run actually led to the playoff final at Wembley, my first ever trip to Wembley as well, where we watched uh, victorious Watford beat Bolton Wanderers 2-0 with uh, an exceptional overhead goal by Nick Wright. Have a look at it. Have a little Google of it. Fantastic goal. And we were in the Premier League from that point. And it was all about the kind of community. It was a fantastic day at Wembley. It was fantastic to spend some time. And that was my first kind of meeting with Watford. I'd heard about the legends of the past, people like John Barnes, Luther Blissett, who had created this attacking football under Graham Taylor's leadership, which took them from the fourth division to the top division. And the uh, rise of the team under Elton John and Graham Taylor, um, Elton John's um, tailor-made army as I remember the chance back in the day and it was about this club I my first ever seat I believe when we went to the stadium was, it was in the now what's now the Anne Swanson family stand so again something else Graham Taylor brought to the football club was about the family was about the community was about bringing the families to football and again that is why I think this was such a great place to start the Walk for Autism 2024, the stadium tour, right outside the Graham Taylor statue. So why start the Walk for Autism from Watford? So again, it's a family club. It's a community club that starts all the way back from the Graham Taylor era. I'm an autistic person myself, and I think that one of the best things that we can celebrate from Watford is things like the sensory room. The room designed to help people who 
need adjustments when they go to football to be able to go to the environment the loud noises the kind of atmosphere at a football stadium can sometimes be very daunting for autistic people so i think the importance of having somewhere like the sensory room and again watford was one of the first places to have a sensory room to have this in their club to help support autistic people to go to games to go and enjoy football as everyone should have the right to do so Watford is an important club for that. As I say, the Century Room is important. It's a nice atmosphere. We were lucky to be in the Century Room back in 2022, having some pictures and having a little bit of a look around it as we were doing the last walk for autism from Leicester to Watford. So we thought nothing better than let's start again from Watford. It was such a great place to start. Uh, uh, it was such a great place to finish the last walk. And again, let's start and finish this walk from Watford we're going to loop London so Watford being just on the outskirts of London just gives us that opportunity to kind of make that a start and finish point and so as I say for the support we had from Watford the Century Room the Anna Kennedy Online Charity is partnered with Watford they do special events I know they've got more events planned in the summer they've had a tour recently where some children and families were able to go around and have a little tour of the stadium get them sort of settled met some fantastic players I think Tom Ince, um, Edda Kirby and um, Jack Reeves were the three players that supported that day which was absolutely brilliant of them to take their time to support such a great charity as well so that is why we think it's an important thing for Watford to start and finish the Walk for Autism 2024, the stadium tour. the 2022 walk for autism when we walked from Leicester to Watford and that's why we wanted to come back again and start and finish this epic journey from Vicarage Road. I want to say a massive massive thank you to everyone who's helped so far in the beginning of setting this walk up which will be taking place in August and at the end of the episode we are going to be doing a little bit of a credit about who has supported us so far. If you want to get involved, if you want to join our lovely little roll call of people that have supported, then please get in touch with the podcast. And this is how you can get in touch by our website, which is inside the orange.co.uk. You can follow us on our social media channels on Instagram, which is inside the orange, inside the orange podcast on Facebook and Orange Watts on X. And don't forget our GoFundMe page where you can donate and share to help raise the awareness raise the funds for the fantastic autism charity anna kennedy online i'll put some links to anna's charity also in the show notes and description as well as a link to my partner in crime godo or team godo as the brand is to for you to go and see what they do and a bit more about what they bring to the charity fundraiser he's done some amazing things over the years so that it is not to be missed on his page at all finally i just want to say a big thank you to everyone 
Um, we are going to be bringing up a roll call at the end of this episode where you can see who has supported us. If you want to be a part of that and want to add your name and ask thanks to you on this podcast, then please get in touch, talk to clubs, do whatever you can do to help support and push this as far as we can. It's always amazing to bring these podcasts to you and we will continue to do them weekly as much as we can with new info, new updates and even just focuses like this on some of the clubs that are supporting. So please, please, please don't feel you can't reach out and help us make this as big as we can. As always, when we say goodbye on these podcasts, goodbye and take care. Thank you.